George Lucas is reportedly returning to Lucasfilm and Star Wars and is going to be heavily involved in an upcoming live action series. Before we get to this, I'd like to ask you, please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos here at The Trent Report. Wrote this up over at thatparkplace.com. And this information comes from a former Star Wars assistant director and second unit director, as well as a uh, set decorator, Roger Christian. He claims that George Lucas is returning to Star Wars and will be involved in a new live action series. Christian won an Academy Award for the original Star Wars film for Best Production Design. And he revealed in a recent interview with YouTuber Star Wars Theory that Lucas is returning. This is what he said. I think he's coming back. I'm pretty sure now that he's doing a series. I think that they're now bringing him into the fold from what I hear because there's a Star Wars live action series coming. And I've got a strong suspicion that George will have something to do with that. That's what I'm thinking. And I might be uh, prophesying. That's what I had heard and read. And I don't know from anything apart from I'm prophesizing that might happen because you've been or excuse me, because you've seen he's been very physically present there. He's been down on the sets and everything. So Roger Christian saying that George Lucas is returning to Lucasfilm and Star Wars. Uh, I do find his comments uh, interesting. They do come in the wake of Lucas supporting the Walt Disney Company amid its proxy battle against Nelson Peltz. In the middle of March, Lucas read, uh, a statement from Lucas read, Creating magic is not for amateurs. When I sold Lucasfilm just over a decade ago, I was delighted to become a Disney shareholder because of my longtime admiration for its iconic brand and Bob Iger's leadership. When Bob recently returned to the company during a difficult time, I was relieved. No one knows Disney better. I remain a significant shareholder because I have full faith and confidence in the power of Disney and Bob's track record of driving long-term value. I have voted all of my shares for Disney's 12 directors and urge other shareholders to do the same. The statement was a little bizarre given Lucas's public statements were critical of the Walt Disney Company's handling of Star Wars after he sold the company for over $4 billion back in 2012. For example, in an interview with Charlie Rose ahead of the release of The Force Awakens in 2015, Lucas described the Walt Disney Company and its leadership, including Bob Iger, as white slavers. He said, these are my kids, all the Star Wars films. I love them. I created them. I'm very intimately involved in them. I sold them to the white slavers that take these things. And, and then Rose kind of cut him off. It's a shame. It's a shame because I would have loved to have heard what he was actually going to say there. But uh, Charlie Rose uh, snuffed that out. We also had CEO Bob Iger revealing in his memoir that Lucas felt betrayed on how Iger uh, handled uh, the sequel trilogy. Uh, he wrote in his book, at some point in the process, George told me that he had completed outlines for three new movies. He agreed to send us three copies of the outlines, one for me, one for Alan Braverman, and one for Alan Horn, who'd just been hired to run our studio. Alan Horn and I read George's outlines and decided we needed to buy them, though we made clear in the purchase agreement that we would not be contractually obligated to adhere to the plot lines he'd laid out. He knew that I was going to stand firm on the question of creative control, but it wasn't an easy thing for him to accept, and so he reluctantly agreed to be available to consult with us at our request. I promised that he would that we would be open to his ideas. This was not a hard promise to make, of course. We would be open to George Lucas's ideas, but like the outlines, we would be under no obligation. Early on, Kathy, uh, Kath Kathleen Kennedy brought J.J. Abrams and Michael Arndt up to Northern California to meet with George at his ranch and talk about their ideas for the film. George immediately got upset as they began to describe the plot, and it dawned on him that we weren't using one of the stories he's submitting during the ne negotiations. Iger went on to admit they had no intention of ever using Lucas's outlines. The truth was, Kathy, J.J., Alan, and I had discussed the direction in which the saga should go, and we all agreed that it wasn't what George had outlined. George knew we weren't contractually bound to anything, but he thought that our buying the story treatments was a tacit promise that we'd follow them, and he was disappointed that his story was being discarded. I think it's clear that they bought it so <laughs> there wouldn't be comparisons uh, to their sequel trilogy. Nevertheless, Ira was honest as I'd been so careful since our first conversation not to mislead him in any way, and I didn't think I had now, but I could have handled it better. I should have prepared him for the meeting with JJ and Michael and told him about our conversations that we felt it was better to go in another direction. I could have talked through this with him and possibly avoided angering him by not surprising him. Now, in the first meeting with him about the future of Star Wars, George felt betrayed. And while this whole process would never have been easy for him, we'd gotten off to an unnecessarily rocky start. So obviously they're like, uh, he's calling them white slavers ahead of the force awakens. He felt betrayed. 
according to Bob Iger. And then also within in the book, uh, Iger detailed that Lucas was not happy with The Force Awakens. Just prior to the global release, Kathy screened The Force Awakens for George. He didn't hide his disappointment. There's nothing new, he said. In each of the films in the original trilogy, it was important to him to present new worlds, new stories, new characters, new technologies. In this one, he said there weren't enough visual or technical leaps forward. Uh, and then leap ahead uh, uh, half a decade, 2020, he made an appearance at the East Harlem School at Exodus House as part of the virtual speaker series. He was asked by seventh grader Jeremiah. I think this is just like a canned question. Just don't believe a seventh grader would ask something like this. But uh, Jeremiah asked, the world has changed so much since the first Star Wars movie. How do you think the changes in the fight for racial justice will impact the Star Wars universe going forward? Uh, as part of his answer, Lucas said, I don't know. I mean, I kind of lost control of Star Wars, so it's going off in a different path than what I intended. The first six Star Wars films are very much mine and my philosophy. I think that philosophy sort of goes beyond any particular time because it's based on history. It's based on philosophy. It's based on a lot of things. So I think it's possible. It's very possible that Bob Iger, the Walt Disney company cut a deal with George Lucas to have him return to star Wars and attempt to write the ship in return for his support of Bob Iger and the Walt Disney company board of directors, uh, as opposed to Nelson Peltz. Uh, I think that is possible. I think there's, I think I just kind of went through some of the evidence that shows that it seems, uh, I mean, we've seen 2015, uh, Bob Iger, uh, sharing his excerpts from that, from around that time frame as well. in that 2015 force awakens, 2015, 2014, 2016 time where George Lucas clearly was not happy. He's calling the Walt Disney company white slavers. Uh, Bob Iger is saying that he felt betrayed. He was upset. He didn't like what they did. We have quotes from Bob Iger saying he thought he was disappointed in The Force Awakens. And then we jump forward to half a decade and he's saying he's lost control of the franchise. It's no longer his. He doesn't actually buy into what they are pushing there. So uh, I don't think it, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that Bob Iger went to George Lucas, cut a deal with him to kind of bring him back. And now that's why we're hearing from Roger Christian that George Lucas is coming back. Now, obviously, this is all based on what Christian is saying. If it's true, we'll, we'll see if Lucas even comes back, right? Uh, but let me know what you guys make of this. Do you think that George Lucas is returning to Lucasfilm and Star Wars and he will be uh, working on a new live action Star Wars show? We know that they had that uh, under uh, underworld show uh, a lot of that stuff was done uh, scripted out so it's possible he could be working on something like that uh, but let me know what you guys make of this do you think he's returning and uh, why do you think he is returning if indeed he is let me know in the comments below remember to always be charitable but to always speak the truth